Did you know you can write Kotlin in a module named Build Source to help manage your Gradle dependencies? When you run Gradle, it checks for the existence of a directory named Build Source. Gradle then automatically compiles this code and puts it on the class path of your build script. First, we create a new directory called Build Source in the root of our project. We then create a new file called build.gradle.kts. Inside this file, we'll define one plugin called Kotlin DSL. This plugin allows you to use Kotlin for Gradle build scripts. We need to do a Gradle sync now because Android Studio currently thinks that this is a file in a new directory. Because Gradle automatically picks up the build source module when it's there, after the Gradle sync is complete, we'll see that the red highlighting in Android Studio goes away. At this point, we can now add some Kotlin code. We need to follow the same directory structure we typically have, and we can do that by creating a few folders. We'll create a source folder, main folder, and Java folder. This is the standard directory structure used when using Kotlin or Java code. When we right click on the Java folder and create a new file, you will now see that there's an option to create a Kotlin file. We'll name it dependencies.kt because we want it to be used for dependency management. But you could actually name this file anything that you wanted. Inside this file, we'll create a Kotlin object named versions, which will be statically available in our Gradle files. Here, we can define a Kotlin val for our version number. We'll also create a depths object where we can store the fully qualified dependencies. These objects will replace our current configuration in the Gradle extra properties. We'll copy over the Kotlin standard library dependency from our extra properties. When we start typing the version number, you can see that we have autocomplete. This is because we are writing Kotlin code right now. We can now use this dependency definition in our app's build.gradle file as well. Just by typing in the depths object name, you can see the autocomplete is also available in this build.gradle file. Not only that, but we can hold down the command button and click on the dependency, which will take you to the definition. This is a small detail, but very helpful when navigating code. After we've added in a few more versions, the usefulness of autocomplete becomes even clearer. I'll jump ahead now to show you what the resulting file looks like as I follow the same process for the rest of our dependencies. Now that our dependencies are defined in Kotlin, I can navigate to my app's build.gradle file and start replacing the extra properties with my Kotlin managed properties. I'll do this for all of the versions as well as the dependencies. Now that we've finished migrating our app module, I'll go ahead and migrate module A and module B as well. Now that we've migrated all of our configuration, we can officially delete our no longer used Gradle extra properties from the root build.gradle file. We'll sync Gradle to ensure that we didn't forget anything and that the build is successful. The next time you need to upgrade the Android support library or bump your target SDK, you'll only have a few lines to change. That's when you'll appreciate the effort it took to manage your Gradle dependencies with Kotlin and the build source module. It may not seem like a, that big of a deal, but managing Gradle dependencies is a total pain, at least for most Android developers like me. And getting to use Kotlin and having autocomplete in Android Studio is a huge game changer.